Hello right there YouTubers. Got a lot of nonsense going on. I did that uh, cutting that poplar in the back. That didn't go too bad. Got a lot of going on today. I was uh, working on this keyway and I have it, it goes in this way. I'll show you in a minute. Um, I cut an extra 10 thousandths off this end here and then I put these little divots in there so when you put screw the sets in there which I'm just going to put grade 8 bolts in there because um, sets sometimes the Allens crank out after years I don't know this is where it goes it's pretty hard to to measure it that's about the position I think it goes in too I can't I can't get the camera down in here um, it's it's hard to get the measurement because this thing is so so messed up I can I can but the problem was the wheel was turning when the shaft was turning because I've had it running now I've had the train going up and down the track, but you can see that this is all the flatness. The bottom part is all boogered up. It goes up to this. It goes up to this spot right here. Um, this is the mandrel that came out of Indiana on the Indiana mill that I bought. Um, so anyhow, this goes in like this. I'm not going to put it together until I get anti C's in there. I do have other anti C's. But I took time out to have my fingernails done in between while I was working on this. I had my fingernails done. Well, not exactly done. I painted them. Well, didn't exactly paint them. I just changed one a different color. I guess you guys all know about those. Anyhow, um, so this will slide up to that. Now, these two little ind indentations, did I just say what they were for? So when you put those, these in, uh, the screws in there, if you do, this thing fits in so tight, if you deform that and swell it out, then you might have a hard time getting it out. So it could still swell out down there further, but it'll kind of seat in in a, in a lower spot. Um, now to find the spots here, I took um, these things here, which are, I don't know what they're called, some kind of punch. There's a name for them. Anyhow, I put those down in that hole, and I noticed that one was a little little different than the other which doesn't really make any difference it'll be it'll work fine so now I'm working on a million different things as usual rains coming in tonight oh man I can't get out of here rains coming in tonight here's some of the tools that are left over I got to get all that cleaned up before the rain comes in even though this supposedly won't get wet in here I tied that up so it'll straighten out the reason that I did not put this one gentleman was asking I don't sorry I don't remember names but he's a he's a regular viewer is because I want to put a key set in this before I go putting it on so it won't spin. If you just bury those down in the shaft, it's just going to destroy stuff. So um, I'd rather have it go down into a keyway and destroy the uh, that area around there. So i got to get a, uh, a brooch and make an adapter off that piece of... Uh, I can't think what I'm thinking of. Shaft that I got over here. There's another spare piece of shaft over here that somewhere over here there it is that's what I cut off this shaft when I brought it in I also got to put a couple screws in there but I've had it running had it, had it going up and down the track I do it here now except for I don't have uh, uh, the tripod here it's at the back we're gonna go back there and finish those trims up at the other mill and discuss a couple things at the other mill I'll tell you what I made a mistake by inviting David Copperfield over to give me a hand with this mill because all he did is make my uh, uh, what do you call it anti seize disappear so you know he comes over and visits a lot and every time he leaves something's missing I did look I did look behind here but I thought I'd give it another look somebody just emailed me, emailed me to look behind the seat I I had looked back here and um, I've got between here and up there that's probably that's over 300 foot so I got 300 foot there to check with the metal detector and I got you know both sides and I don't know a lot of times I'll go up that way so I don't make too big of a trail there so somebody had suggested use a metal detector and look for it but I don't know the path that I took or whether I took the path down through the woods on the day that I was bringing the anti seas down and it could roll over most of, most of the stuff here you can see I don't know have no idea where Dave put it. Dave visits too much. I tied this stuff up just for the heck of it. It really doesn't need it. I should actually put this tarp on this side because that's untreated wood. This is all treks. It isn't going to go anywhere. 
and it ain't all screwed down either is it oh well i gotta get back working on stuff slowly working on little things there's little things that i got just looking here i don't see anything in here except for weeds that are dying i sprayed sprayed for weeds the other day yeah i could have even put that on and i season here i'll carry something then start looking for something and set it down i don't recall re-looking in here but i have 10 tons of pack rat parts well you know i did come back here there was a mouse in the mouse trap i but i don't remember what when i came back here i could have set it down to get the mouse i have mouse traps i don't set them too much in the um summertime there's my peanut butter i wonder where my peanut butter jar was i just threw away the lid to it uh because if you set them in the summertime they rot and stink and all that kind of stuff <clears throat> i don't see it sitting here anywhere flat tire always got flat tires on everything but those tires are from back in the 80s they're dry rot in the sidewall also anyhow let's go back and do those trims i don't see it it's it's not coming out and biting me anyway i wish it would so we'll go back there and discuss a couple things on the mill and the new blade and all that kind of stuff and who knows what we're going to do well i'm going to do the trims hopefully i'll get the trim shouldn't take but a few minutes I'd make this a two-parter and leave the leave the trip out, except for I don't know how to put them together yet, guys. Wood. I got the blower up here. I got to get that off. And I got another thing up here. Ah, I will show you later. That that could be on another movie. Up. Try to figure out what it is. Thing. I even looked down in here, figuring I might have set it down here because I know I was looking for bolts there's all sorts of bolts and stuff for the sawmill in there I don't know where it dropped off of. see I might have had it and come back here and it could have dropped the roll probably find it with a lawnmower get out and stretch their legs another squirrel squirrels chewed up my oxygen and settling I have those working on that Jeep in the barn they chewed up the oxygen line for the third time I don't know whether I'll be able to fix this one always dear Got a, yeah, that one's on the normal pad. The other one jumped over. That one's the smart one. He knows the routine. They don't really care. There's the little Bambi right there. They're pretty, but they sure do. They, they don't bother me now because I'm not planting a garden, so it really doesn't make any difference. I got enough potatoes. We, I, You saw me digging the potatoes. All right, I'm going to put you in the tree stand. I mean tripod. Um... Anyhow, on the, on the new blade, it is breezy back here, so I got my piece of whatever on the back here. I did go ahead and uh, clean up all these. Now, want somewhere around here, I guess you're in, in there. I just never know when you're in there because I, I get in the way. I have... An orange tooth. And maybe it's gone. I'm pretty sure it, there it is. Can you see that? I'll take you. May, I don't know whether you can see that. I got a tooth that I uh, painted orange. Now I've sawed with this since I painted that orange. That goes to show you that the the only thing that touches the is this. So you can see the orange. So then, if you go up another another 90 degrees from it, could be the other direction. There it is. I um, also put a mark there. Now in the camera, I can't see anything. There, I can see it now. So I had the orange one. So I checked the lead two times. And I came up with the same exact amount both times. Okay. Now it shows the lead at one eighth of an inch between this and that, or the saw blade leading out 
or leading the way it's supposed to one eighth of an inch okay now I went in and referenced all my books and all my books said an eighth of an inch and ten feet and a lot, a lot of the other ones said a sixteenth of an inch or a thirty second of an inch so like I said I think the lead is too is too strong and so I'm going to change that and it takes me quite a while to change the lead I'm you know you can go in there and do it real quick but I got to take take this cover off to get down into those and that's a, a big pain in the butt because you got a you got a setup like this I don't know what size this is but it's right good size and then you should really loosen the back back there also now one thing about this that's a uh, coupler that'll kind of take up a little bit of this way that way kind of thing I see I'm missing one of the rubbers in it I don't really like that coupler but it, it seems to work it's been there for so many years and it worked on the mill before me so I'm not changing that anyhow um, another thing that I don't really care is the hole for another size tooth okay can you see that some of the things I don't like because that means water and crap can get down in there and build up not I don't think you're going to have water from. Uh, I don't think you're going to have water from rain. I think you're going to have water from condensate if you got anything. Moisture can get in there, so I got to really make sure that I oil this thing down because these these are tapered. Uh, there's like a three degree taper in those uh, collars. This is the, what they call, I think, the fast collar, and you can see we got an Allen set in there. We did everything to get it to stain, and it keeps moving around. So I think if you if you watch the gap down there, it might be. See how? Well, it's 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 moving. You could probably see it better on this side. So I'm gonna put a dial indicator. If I was smart enough, I would have remembered to bring it down at this time. So I'll put a dial indicator on it to change the lead on it. And it's all I know right now. I'm perfect at one inch. So if I put a dial indicator here and put it right here take the um, guides back, put it right here, I can move it, and then when I start tightening this, move it exactly to where I want it, then when I start moving that, if I come off a of zero where I want it to be on this, because I'll set it, I wanted to move it um, this way, um, a sixteenth of an inch. So once I zero it in at sixteenth of an inch this way, then it, I, as I start tightening the different nuts on this thing if I see that indicator move then I'll stop on that one and go to another one until I get everything as tight as I want it so that's how I do that now on the um, three three uh, when the mandrel when you got a long mandrel or th three bearings on it I've never adjusted one of those right without two people do it the same way measure that once measure it twice you know exactly what you got Put a dial indicator on it. Put the blade exactly where you want it. Then start tightening up. Now you might tighten this one. Then you might go back and tighten this one. Then you might go back and tighten that one. Leave the middle one loose. The middle one shouldn't be touches. So now you get the front one tight and the back one tight. Your indicator still dead nut on zero. Then you start tightening this one. And you watch it. You can twist those, those little bolts without the lock bolt with your fingers and make that indicator move. Okay, as soon as you see that indicator move or the other person that's helping you sees that indicator move off zero, then you go to the other side and back and forth a little bit until your indicator stays right on zero or maybe one or two thousandths. And that's how I adjust, adjust the lead. Here I'm close enough that I can just look over and see it. So I'm all right with this one. But when I get back on that other mandrel on the number one, which has to have the lead checked, that thing I can't see from back there to see if that micrometer is moving a... Uh, off the zero so that's how I adjust the lead I'm gonna set this one at um, 1 16th of an inch uh, see how it does we're going to trying to think what else oh I know what I wanted to say if you ever watch you know different things check out Tony's cool tools Tony's a uh, fairly new youtuber but he's been around for a long time very smart got a lot of real interesting stuff and I've, I've enjoyed watching his movies. He speaks and edits a lot better than I do. <laughs> so I think he might, I might lose you to him. But I don't think he's got, a, he might have a sawmill up there. He's got a lot of cool tools. 
So in your whereabouts, go up there and check him out. I think you'll really enjoy his channel. He's, he's very knowledgeable on a lot of stuff. Here's another thing I wanted to show you. Between last night and tonight, this board has come up, I'll bet that's four inches. Let me find my my get you get you measuring start. I'm gonna I'm gonna roll the other end up, but see it's if you see the other end, I bet that's up four inches. Almost four inches warping that thing. Can you? That's how quick this stuff goes goofy. That's why you got to get it stickered. I found a place to put it. I meant to show you on the way up here, but. I forgot that board isn't any good anyway because it's got a crack coming down this side and a crack going that way that's gonna be just a trash board I might as well just burn it up but it can go on top or something like that can you see the red in it down there let me take you that that was really pretty poplar here you got a little bit of I think that's pre spalting look at that but you can see this that thing had a twisted a twisted grain to it. Look at that pink and red. I don't know how it comes out on here, but it, it, it's pretty. So I did that, did that, did that. I've got all that cleaned up. It's already burning. I burned a ton more today. I've got half of that pine over there burned up. So once I get that burned up, I can get that out of there. Here's some pine that it's going to rain tonight and tomorrow. That I want to, I decided I wanted to straighten it up and might try to save it. It was just junk. Remember yesterday I had this pile all the way out to here? I've burnt probably 10 bundles of wood. Now you can see that board there already coming up. So these got to get stickered. If you don't stick them right quick, um, they'll go goofy. Look at that. There's not a knot on not it. But that, that's got a lot of check back into it. And you can see there was a problem there. Because see how it's discolored on both sides of that? So that's not something that just appeared. <sighs> There's some more of that. I don't know whether this is focusing in on that fast enough to get how pretty that is. Um, I got a place where I think I might be able to use that. So I'm going to probably hold on to it. But I got to find a place to st stack it, stick it, store it, stuff it, and all that kind of stuff. So let's see if we can't get this... Uh, I only have three pieces to trim. Maybe four. No, this one's all bent up too. That's all cattywampus. I'm going to take you over the other side. This thing, the reason I got... Uh-oh, what was that? I don't know what it was. Anyhow, the reason uh, this thing's blowing, blowing too much uh, sawdust over the top. That's why I'm trying to uh, get something a little bit different. So put on your ears and we're going to chop, chop.
you can see it on this side. I meant to say, talked about some other stuff, but some just didn't. Just see how it goes: light, dark, light, dark, light, dark, light, dark. Now maybe it's the angle. I don't know. I get because it it's you can see the blade wobble in and out. Well, I think I might uh, loosen the blade, back it off, pull it out of the pins and turn it 180. First, I'm going to mark where the high spot and low spot is. Like I said, you can see two spots in that mandle. There's the one coming up. See the Allen set in it? And look at this stuff still hadn't come off of there. Boy, there's a dead animal back here. See the other Allen set in it up there? Did everything we could do to make that fast caliber. So that might not be the straightest thing in the world. So I'm going to find out... Uh, where the discrepancy is and probably put about a two thousandth of an inch shim in there to try to get some of this wobble out. There's that tooth that I saw the other day. Remember the remember the funny little spot? It looks like a chip out of it, but it really isn't. Um, these boards here are junk. But you know when you're stickering the boards, I don't know if you've ever some of you probably have stickered some wood before. You always get get to the top, you put your best ones on the bottom, and then you work your way up. And then you put your junkiest ones at the top. That's why you got to sticker stack, select, whatever order you do it in. And then uh, as you get to the top, you need more weight. And I'll probably, I might take those um, pieces of pine slab out and put them in there. So anyhow, we're running out of time. I run out at 30 minutes. So I got a lot of work ahead of me before the rain comes in. I'm going to get to it. And I might bring you back this afternoon and watch watch the railroad chain at the other one go up and down. So thanks for stopping by. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. And uh, we'll see you later. Now i got to unpiece my tape. See my little piece of flap here?